What's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how to make any character in D2R offline so you can test builds, uh, make any rune words you want, basically feel what any spec might be like in the end game of D2R, or maybe just uh, mess around rolling rune words so you become more comfortable. It's up to you, but in this video, I will show you how to make anything in offline for D2R easily. So the first step in all of this is finding out where your files are. Where are the characters that we're going to make? And it's not daunting, it's actually kind of easy. Once you've done this a few times, you're going to be moving through smooth as. So follow along here, okay? In the bottom left-hand side, there's many ways to do this. If you don't see this folder for some reason, inside the search box, you could type File Explorer, okay? And as you're typing the word Explorer, right, it automatically auto-finishes. And I want you to click on Apps File Explorer, okay? This is your File Explorer that opens up. So now you're on your computer. On the left-hand side, I want you to find local disk. It's usually under local disk C. Yours may be different, but generally it won't be. Inside of local disk C, I want you to find the users folder. That's us. That's who we are when we're playing D2R. I'll double click users and then I'll find the folder that best suits me or the account that I use when I log in. So I'll double click on that. And once I'm inside my user's name, I'm gonna look down for something called saved games because D2R is always saving the game. And you'll see here, I've got Diablo 2 resurrected. I got some PTR folders. For the purpose of this video, we only care about the Diablo 2 Resurrected folder, so I'll double click on that. And congratulations, you found where all of your characters are. And this is where we're going to insert our brand new made offline characters for testing. So now that you know where your character files are located and how to access them, the next question I have for you is what kind of character are we going to make? And for the purpose of this video, we're going to make a martial arts sin because it's it's the talk of the town. It's the hot new spec and it's blowing up everybody's graphics cards, right? But focusing on the video here, I'm at a website here called maxroll.gg. And in this website, I can choose any character that I want in any build. So I just mentioned we're gonna go with the assassin. So I'll click on the assassin and I'll click on Phoenix Strike, which brings me to this tab, okay? Inside of the assassin build, there's all sorts of different versions, but I'm gonna go with something that might work in the end game to find out, do I wanna hunt down a Griffin's Eye Diadem? Do I wanna make an Enigma? Do I wanna roll two mosaics to make this class? Is it worth my time grinding on ladder to play this class that I might enjoy? Well, that's what the offline character file lets you do, is you can make it whenever you want and, uh, and test that out without much effort at all. So, now we know we're making a kicks in, let's go into the meat and potatoes to make this character and then import it into our game for use. So this website is called d2runewizard.com. And in the link in the description below, you can use this. I would recommend you bookmark it, save it to create offline characters. It's actually really simple. And I'll show you the basics of it. You'll notice I've already got this all done up in advance just to make the video easier and smoother to watch. But if I wanted to make something like a Griffin's Eye Diadem for the character, I would click somewhere inside of my stash or my inventory or legitimately um, right here. I'll, I will delete this item and show you. Um, let's go ahead and delete this too. So the character has no, no helmet item. You just click on the helmet and then you start typing in what you want. I want Griffin's eye because that's what that guide said to use. So I'll type, I started typing the word Griffin, right? And there it is, a unique helmet Griffin's eye item, add item, and there it is. And then when I click on it, I get this accordion style pop-up that shows up and I can go, okay, I can, I can expand stuff. What do I want to do? Well, I'm going to go ahead and add a socket. Does it have sockets? Yes or no. With a slider control? Yes, it does. Okay, cool. What's inside of it? What's the socketed item? I'm going to type in the word facet as in a, a unique jewel, right? What kind of facet? Well, I want a lightning facet, preferably on die because they trade for a lot. Doesn't matter to me, but that's what I'm gonna use. So I insert a unique rainbow jewel that is a facet lightning on die, and boom, it adds it to it. You can see right here what the total item is gonna be. It's got plus the lightning skill damage of 20% and negative 25 enemy light res. Sounds good, save. Now, I've gone ahead and made everything else. I do have boots on, it may look like I don't. I do have boots. This website doesn't seem to know how to show it when you upgrade something. So I'm using the downgrade and upgrade buttons to create what's going to be Gore Rider War Boots for this Kixen, but I want them to be upped Myrmidon Greaves for more kick damage. Just remember that when you're testing this, if you're not getting particular damage you thought you would, make sure with the Kixen you're upping your boots, okay? Back into what we're doing here. So I'll hit save and I do need 208 strength to use it. I've also made all of the gear for my mercenary. I've got Fortitude and Darials and a four socket ethereal man catcher that I'll roll into an infinity once I get into the game, so that's good. A couple things I don't have. I, I do have the torch, I have the Annie. I don't have a, a crack of the heavens yet, so let's see, what, can I just add that crack of the heavens? Perfect. So I'll add that right now, no worries. And when I click on it, it looks like it's level 87. The negative lightning res is negative 75, but I want to edit that to negative 70 because, hey, I want nice things. I want a perfectly rolled Sunder Grand Charm, right? I mean, hey, I've already got the best luck in the world. I'm already using a perfect Annie and a perfect torch. Why not add a little extra? Why not? I deserve I deserve that, right? Anyway, 
That's how easy it is. You click and you add it. If you want to add more skillers, you certainly could do that. So we'll click on a, on a spot somewhere in the game and I'll type in martial arts, right? Martial arts uh, plus to life. Why not? Let's add a couple. I don't want to add one. Let's add at least, I don't know, five. Add multiple and boom, there's my five skillers. And I'm also getting plus 40 to life. While it's true that 45 would be the highest for the purposes of this video, now you know how to make them. So I'll grab this and I'm gonna drag it over. I actually want them over here. Okay, cool. That's what I'm looking for. Fantastic. Just drag them on over and I'll, I'll align all this once I get in the game. I'll make it real pretty and real nice. But you see how simple it is? I'm clicking on areas to create things. I've also got the CTA on swap with the Spirit Monarch. And how I did that was easy. I just clicked on the character slot and I started typing out the item that I wanted. I will say that this interface is a little bit... Um, if you're not used to this, it might seem overwhelming. Don't worry about it. Just get used to typing in the word and seeing what kind of options you have, okay? So one more time, let's make something else like Enigma. If I wanted to make an Enigma, okay? Watch, E-N-I-G-M-A, Enigma. Okay, cool. Uh-oh, it's an Archon plate. I don't like that. How would I fix that? Let me show you. I'll add the item to my inventory. So now I have Enigma here and Enigma here. Okay, so I click on the item. Up comes this, this pop-up. I don't want Archon plate. If I downgrade that to Mage plate, perfect. That's what I wanted. What if you're different? What if you want something like Gothic Plate? Just click on that drop down and start looking for the base that you want. Ring mail, scale mail, whatever you want. I've actually made Enigma for people in Sacred Armor. I've seen some things. Okay, moving on. Uh, this is it, so that, that's what I want. I wanted this in Mage Plate, and then I hit save. Perfect, done deal. That's, that's how you make it. So now that I have all the gear that I want, I'm gonna wanna give my character some gold, okay? So stash gold, let's give him a whole bunch. He's got tons, yeah? Great, gold on this character, lots. Perfect. Maybe that's too high. Who knows? Nine. Great. Tons of gold. Now what do you do? Let me show you. You start off looking like this. I want you to name your character, but I don't want you to put any underscores and there's definitely no spaces for your character. So this character's name is going to be called Kick Him Fast, right? Because that's what we're doing. We're kicking fast. Um, for quests, I can unlock hell and I could complete all. You'll notice all of the quests become complete. Um, if, I, if I reset or complete all, that's up to me. How is your character going to be? It's an offline character file. Mess around and, and customize it however you want. That's important. Next thing, waypoints. Do you want all the waypoints? Yep, unlock all. Great. Item bonuses, we're not going to worry about that for now. Skills, I could do that here. Um, and that's it. So general, we're looking good. Got everything I need. And then I'll click this button right here. I want to make sure it's a D2R file and I hit save to file. Okay. Kickemfast.key is created and kickemfast.d2s. Why are they called that? because that's what I called my character. If I would have called this Barricade Kicks, the name would be barricadekicks.key and barricadekicks.d2s. And now that I've got these files, I'll show you the next section of what to do with them. So now that we've got the files, we're gonna go ahead and click on this little arrow and we're gonna show in folder. I'm gonna grab both kickemfast.key and kickemfast.d2s. I'm gonna hold shift and now I'm selecting both. Control X to cut. I'm gonna cut them out of the, of the download folder and I'm gonna put them into that other folder we had before called saved games okay and then i press Control v to paste so you can right click paste if you want to and there they go kick them fast dot d 2 s and kick them fast dot key and i'm done now i'm going to go into the game and i'm going to hit play and you'll notice when i click on offline there's kick them fast level 90 looking real nice and i hit play and i'm going to choose held difficulty because that's where i want to start and uh, if i press i as an inventory keybind is not the same um i have everything i want my scissors so why is there my greater talons is there at negative 30 WSM, I got everything I want, it's all good. I can also roll that uh, that man catcher, which I said we're gonna do, so let's do that right now. Let's see how we do it. Burr, mal, burr, is, okay? Again, I'm practicing rolling rune words, sick. Burr, mal, burr, ist. Yeah, right, that's crazy. Okay, it's 324.55. 325.55 is perfect, by the way, that's actually hilarious. Uh, I also made a jewel for my merc so we can help do trav, that, that's unreal, unreal roll. Um, and here we go. So I got a jewel, 15 IAS, 30 fire res, Andes, cool, socket it, done. And I can toss this on a Merc, and there's my fortitude. Life is good. And uh, yeah, making this part pretty easy. We got to respec our character. But what are we going to do? Well, this is all of the choices we would have made are inside of that character guide that we would have used before. So it's that simple. All of the choices are there. You see the guide, you know how to spend your points, you know how to then build out your character right. And now you can be testing it offline. It's no different for any character. It could be a sorcerer's barb, assassin was the example here, but that's what you do. You use the d2runewizard.com tool to export a D2R character file for offline play. I hope this video helps you. It certainly helped me. Um, I made live content with you guys through this process. This is how we tested characters in the PTR so we knew what the next generation of the season or characters were gonna feel like. I really hope that you get some value out of this. Have fun and enjoy, and I hope this video 
gave you a new tool to use to make you better in Diablo. Take care. See you on the next one.